Here we are in section 3.4, and you'll see up here, so nest the decision structures and the F, L, if, else statement, which is awesome, by the way. So we'll get to that in a second. But let's talk about nested decision structures. So we can put, uh, for example, an if statement inside another if statement. So if we, and we did that a little bit earlier in another, another example. Uh, but let's go ahead and, and check this out. Let's look at this program. So if we're saying uh, we're trying to determine if someone qualifies for a loan, they must meet two conditions. They have to earn at least $30,000 a year and they have to have been employed for at least two years. So it's going to check the first condition. And if it's true, it will check the second condition. If the first condition is false, it has no, there's no reason to check the second one. It can just skip it. It knows the whole thing is false. So how will this work? Well, here we go. Let's take a look. So here we go. Our first test, salary greater than or equal to $30,000. If it's false, boom, you must earn at least $30,000 to qualify. If it's true, it will go down. It will ask, here's our second condition, years on the job greater than or equal to two. If it is false, then we can say, nope, you have to blah, 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 had two years, right? If we come over here and it was true, okay, boom, you qualify for the loan and then we move on, okay? So let's take a look at this code. At the top, you'll see we're just defining minimum salary, 30,000, minimum years, two. I know I harp on this a lot, but I still think these are constants. I would capitalize those, just my personal opinion. Uh, and then we're asking for salary, we're asking for years in the job. So fairly simple, uh, you know, as far as that piece goes okay so coming down here here's where we have the heart of the code so here is our first question so if the salary is greater than or equal to minimum salary okay if it's not notice how we can skip all of this uh the the computer will just it will do this test it will say oh this isn't going to cut it and it will just go boom 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 down here to else and say you must earn that okay so that's what that's how that works if this is true it will ask, okay, well, how many years on the job did you have? So you've already answered that question, so it's going to test that. Uh, so we have years on the job. If it's greater than that, boom, you print, you qualify for the loan. If not, we say else right here, boom, you must have been employed for at least two years to qualify. All right? So this is an example of a nested um, decision structure. And uh, you, you, you'll have reasons to do this. You'll see there are lots of little things you can do to play with. All right, so I encourage you to run this and just kind of see how it works in here. Um, just just for fun. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back over here And we're going to talk about if elif else again, right? So really important for these uh, as we're uh, oh, we're still nested. Sorry So just I mean real simple things that we've been talking about kind of all along got to match them up got to be you know Consistently indented all that kind of good stuff. Okay, so let's come down to um, if elif else and this is the way this one works. It is really pretty cool. It's a nice little thing. So, you know, thank you to Python for this little baby. You can have as many elifs as you'd like. And you'll notice as this goes along here. So we have our first one. So we have if a condition, you know, whatever it might be. We have some statements that might work. Elif, notice how now we're right in line. So no more indenting here. You just have to make sure that you indent after each one of these. So notice how this is indented same block right here this is equal here go down another lf so we can keep going right uh and we're testing each one of these conditions as we go the very last one is just else not lf with a condition not else with a condition it's just else and then we have a statement okay so the consistency for this is um is is really nice i i like using if lf and else uh it seems to be I don't know, easier to set up, easier to follow, honestly. Uh, and I'll show you an example of that here in a second. So um, our, our alignment, I, I just pointed that out a second ago. Uh, pretty pretty simple to use, honestly. So I, I think this is a, this is a pretty good one. Um, and I want to show you with this one. Okay, so I put two different uh, pieces in here. This is the first program. This is a grading program. So it's going to go through and ask you some questions in here. As you look at this flowchart, you'll see uh, we're coming in here, we're testing to see if score is greater than 90. So in this particular program, we're checking to see what your grade might be, right? So we're checking if it's greater than 90. If it is, boom, your grade is an A, okay? If it's false, it goes down, checks if it's greater than 80, B, you know, and so on and so forth, okay? So um, let's take a look at this one. 
All right, so here we go. We have we're setting our, our variables up to to set these thresholds. So we have a score, b score, c score, d score. We don't need f because it's other than this, right? Uh, so we have um, and again. I would, capitalize all these i'm gonna say this every time i need to stop doing that but i think these are constants i'll put them as constants so anyway so we have um, a score input your test score i'd probably use a float here too if it was me but just saying and then take a look at this so here we go with all of our nested stuff that we've got going on so we have if and else here here's our, our a grade score that we're testing at 90 then we are coming over here for if else here then we've got if else here for c if else here for d Okay, and, and we've got that, all right? So at any point, if you get the, the indentions wrong, if you forget to, to do this, uh, it causes you problems, okay? So um, this is this is a little bit tricky to uh, to set up. It's harder to troubleshoot when it looks like this. Uh, so this is where I'm going to come over to the next code. So this one right here, so LF instead. And here is the LF one. So again, here was the code. I commented it out, you see. Uh, but here's our code here. If we're going to use if, LF, and else instead, it will look more like this. It's a, it just, it's a cleaner look. It's easier to troubleshoot. Your um, in, indentions are easy to see if something is off. And it follows the same logic. So we're saying if score is greater than or equal to the A score, you get an A. L if so we have um you know else if it's greater than this we have this else if we have this and so anyway so elif i love this as our reserve word um for else if and then down at the very bottom notice how all these elifs have the conditions else is just simply else colon done and then we just print your grade as f if you're like s okay so there's different ways to to uh, set this up but I, I i think that you'll once you get the hang of this i think you'll really like using if elif else uh it keeps things uh simple i think along the way okay so i want to show you one additional thing in here because this comes up uh in the book and if you're looking at stuff online and you, you may go, what is this? And this, this will come up uh, later on too, but I wanted to show you some assignment operators. So this last little piece in here, um, we've been using, uh, obviously, this assignment operator. So, you know, with the equal sign here. But I wanted to show you some of these other operators and what they do. And so I put this, this table in here. Uh, it's in your book. I think it's in the section. It might be in another section. I just threw it in here first because I started seeing these uh, operators and I wanted you to be able to see them as well. So when you see plus equal, what that is telling you, and, you, and it would be in something like this. So X plus equal five. That is the same thing as saying x equals x plus 5. It is just a shortcut, okay? And you don't have to use these, but I want you to be able to, to understand. When you look at this, it's not a typo in the book uh, or wherever you're seeing it. This is a specific operator. Uh, same thing with all these other ones. They work the same way. But um, it, you're totally fine using this. Uh, but if you want to tr you know, simplify it and make the code a little bit shorter, Go ahead and play with these. I would say right now, um, and we'll, we'll actually use these more uh, next chapter when we're doing loops and we're setting counters. You know, that'll make sense to you when we do that in chapter four. But um, anyway, I just want to show you just so you can see this, okay? So um, in, in a practical if statement, let me show you these. Um, these two uh, if statements, these conditions are exactly the same. So when you take a look at these, we have um, if is isosceles equals, true, remember two equal signs equals, uh, and that's the same here, right? Uh, and then we have iso count plus equal one. That's the same thing as saying iso count equals iso count plus one, all right? And the same thing here. So I just wanted to show you those, the little uh, shortcut, uh, you know, assignment operators, because they're handy, but, uh, you know, you may or may not get in the habit of using them. It doesn't really matter to me. I don't require it, but you will start seeing these more often uh, in the book and in, and in code, especially next chapter. But I wanted to show you now just in case you happen to see these. Okay, so uh, that's the end of this particular section. Okay, so I just want to mention really quickly. Okay, so back back here in the PowerPoint in the next slide, uh, this is the, the end of this little section here for this week. Your My Programming Lab stuff, I put My Lab, but My Programming Lab stuff, you're going to go from 3.1 to 3.4. 
this will give you some really good practice. So do these in these sections along the way. Hopefully you've been doing them as you've been going. Uh, and for program 3-2, the area of rectangles program, don't forget at the bottom, also it's linked here, uh, there is a video to Tony Gaddis walking you through how to do that program. So I would highly recommend doing that. And then you'll see some of the other uh, programs you're going to do this week in Canvas. So have fun.